Happy Homebrew Wednesday, folks. How you doing? Ryan here. Just drinking a little something wild. But, what? No, it's, it's not homebrew. It's, oh, all right. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me go get it. How's this? How's this? We got it. Snowed in pale ale. Have a double fisted now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is the snowed in pale ale. Uh, I got kegged last week. It probably been in fermentation for a week and a half. It, it, it was a slow fermenter. I mean, it went whole week and it was bubbling. The USO5 was a little slow, but I, I think it was also my temperatures were pretty low too. So. It was probably temperatures that had something to do with it, which that's okay. Um, I do think that um, all, I sucked in a lot of hot material into the uh, carboy by accident. I mean a lot. I probably got most of the hops in there. And I think a lot of the oils from the Centennial came out because Centennial and the Autumn hops went in in the last five minutes. The Autumn was actually when it got pulled off the heat it went in. but. I can definitely taste the sweetness from the Centennial in here. But it's still a pretty good beer. It's not too overwhelming. Um, it drinks good. So what do we have for updates? Um, I bottled the Vanilla Porter last night. Um, well, well, Sunday night I bottled the Vanilla Porter. And uh, today I'm going to be brewing some beer. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, and the coffee porter has been bottled for about a week. So hopefully next week I'll be able to uh, try some. I tried some Friday night, but it just wasn't quite carbonated. I had one bottle that didn't really pop open. Not really too unexpected after a week. Um, the other bottle popped real loud, but when I poured it, I mean, there really wasn't any. Head. It, it had a, they both had a little carbonation in them. So hopefully next week it'll be a little bit better. But I think the oils from uh, from the coffee beans are probably causing there to be no head, but that shouldn't affect carbonation too much. So, what am I brewing today? Today, I am brewing, let's put these beverages over there, the Northern Brewer Extra Pale Ale. So, I'm going to just hold this up for you. This is... A Northern Brewer, Northern Brewer kit, like I said, which is uh, just a brew supply, online brew supply store here in the U.S. Uh, from out of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, let's see, it's, it's the OG um, is 1045. It's a, one of our most popular kits for well over a decade. This American style pale ale is clean, dry, and very hoppy. American hops are the driving force of this beer, featuring the unmistakable citrus, some say grapefruit aroma, of Cascade up front, as well as a smooth bittering at the finish. Pale caramel malt counterpoints the hopping with a sweet grain aroma and gives the appetizing ale its medium body and deep gold color. So we have, here's our ingredients in this. Um, see, this is an extract kit. And, you know, I've had people come into my cast uh, I, I cast on Von Live, try to do it at least once a week, and they come in and said, Extract Brewer, Brewing is not brewing. And, and I think that's, that's kind of bullshit, uh, personally. You know, I've made some good beers with Extract. I've had good all grain beers, too. I think, I think the only major real difference between all grain and Extract is that you just have finer control in all grain. Um, and with extract brewing, I mean, some people just can't do all grain. They're not, I, I'm not in the setup to do it. And I think my beer, most of my beer tastes good. If, if I don't have a good beer, it's because the, I, it wasn't a good recipe, in my opinion. Or it's just not my taste, you know. And, and most of the time, I think if I made a bad beer, it was just not in my taste. And then the recipe's probably fine for the style or something. Anyway, so, um, we have some... Steeping grains here, a pound of Belgian carrot eight. Uh, this will give us some caramel coloring or uh, and flavor. So I mean, you can you know, it's it's, it's a very light. The, the eight is for eight lava bond. So six to eight lava bond, I believe when I looked online. So this this will give us a, little, a light color. 
Um, we'll probably actually get more color from the LME in my opinion. Uh, I don't really know. I wonder if the package here. Let's see. Well, the package doesn't even say the little bond of the LME is, but I'm sure it'll probably get more color than the grains will. But we have six pounds of gold malt extract. Uh, it's obviously liquid form. And for hops, we have three ounces of Cascade. So, two ounces will go in right at the beginning, and one ounce will go in the last minute. I mean, that's, I don't like to do that a whole lot. I feel like I'm wasting hops when I put them in right at the end, but that's all right. That's okay. I'll, I'll do it as a request. Just, because uh, I, I like, when I did try a, a recipe for the first time, I like to do it how the person who wrote the recipe did it. That way, I have, I taste it the way they intended it to be tasted. Some people like to customize more, and that's perfectly all right. That's the best part of home brewing. You can do what you want. There's no wrong way to brew it. There are just better ways. Or... Yeah, we'll go with that. That sounded witty, but uh, these Cascade hops have an alpha acid of 6.5%. Uh, it doesn't say anything about beta acids in here. This Hoptimus Rex, you know, I, I like Hop Union hops more than these Hoptimus Rex just because Hop Union gives you more information, I think. And I'm sure if I go to the Hoptimus Rex website, they probably do have the other information that I'll have here. And let's see, we have our steeping grain bag. And it did come with some priming sugar, but I'm hoping to get this in the keg. This this will be ready. Let's see. It says to go ahead and put in primary for one to two weeks and secondary for two to four weeks. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'll probably have it in primary for well the week or two, and then I'll dump it into secondary just until the keg empties up. Once the keg is out, the Snowden Pale Ale is gone. I'll put this beer in there. Um. Yeah, so that's what I'll do. So let's get brewing. Um, let's have some, uh, you know, it's a brew day, so we're going to have some fun here. Cheers, everybody. Let's make some beer. Let's make some really good beer. All right, first thing I need to do is get my kettle up to uh, volume. Um, there's already a gallon in there. I just added a gallon there. I'm going to get up to 2.5 gallons, so we'll add that other half gallon. Got the stove turned on, we're going to let it heat up a little bit. I got my trusty thermometer so I know how uh, warm the water is. Alright, one thing I like to do is, when I have LME, is I like to put it in a hot water bath so it makes it a little more runnier. It's, it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Alright, uh, the water, this, this, this is a few minutes later. Uh, the water's up to temperature now. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not. I'm sorry. It's, it is not up to temperature yet. So I'm going to fill up the grain bag here. And I'm going to steep it until either it's in there in the water for 20 minutes or until, um, <clears throat> until it's about 170 degrees, whichever one comes first. Oops. This will let us get those flavors and color, a little bit of color out of there. I, I don't think we'll get much color out of this, but we should get a little bit of flavor. I'll just tie it on the handle there and we'll let it sit. I'll reposition the camera a little bit to get a better look at the what's in the pot. All right, so the grains are steeping. Um, probably getting pretty close to 170 degrees about now. As you see, we, the water's taking on some color from those grains. grains let them drain off you don't want to you know I don't want to just throw them away right away you want to let some of the water come out or I guess at this point it's called wort 
that is technically wort. Um, although there's probably not too much, if any, fermentables in there. So, but try to let it drip off as much as possible. I get kind of lazy, so I, I may uh, I'll probably throw it out pretty quick here. Once it starts just to get where it's just dripping and not running, I, I tend to throw out the bag. As you see, one pound of grain there, though, it's going to hold a pretty decent amount of water. So it's going to drip for a little bit. Oh, there we go. See, I already gave up. Got tired of holding that. <laughs> um, yeah, if you look at the work there, you can see it actually got a little darker than I was expecting. I thought it would be a bit lighter than that, but that's all right. In a glass um, later, when you know when I'm drinking it or whatever, it'll probably look a bit lighter. When you can't get too much light into it; it tends to look a little darker. And the bubbles on top also make it look, seem a little darker because they're not letting that much light through. Now, if we just take a look at the thermometer, we can see what temperature currently is. Uh, yeah, we're just above 170. Take a nice, good look there at the wort. It is still relatively clear. Um, so the, those grains really didn't give as much color, like I said. Uh, a lava bond really is a pretty light color. All right, we're gonna get the water up to a boil now. It actually has been going, so it is up to a boil. So we're going to take the pot off. Um, I'm going to probably read just the camera here. There we go. I'm going to grab the uh, liquid malt extract and uh, pour it in and stir it up. And there's only, in this recipe, there's only the one can. As I mentioned earlier, the, the six pound, I guess it, you can call it a jug, I guess, if you want. Um, six pound jug. I'm not really sure how much that holds in gallons. I've kind of wondered that, but I always measure it in pounds. Now I'm probably struggling right now trying to get it, get the lid off. I probably could have saved a couple of minutes of uh, recording <laughs> by cutting this part out, but I didn't. So it is what it is. Am I right? There we go. Now we're going to cut the lid, the plastic off. I wish they would put little tabs so that you can rip it off easier. I don't know why they don't, but I don't even, once this is open, I don't even really get all the, uh, cover off there you can still see it and usually I try to do it clean but these mailered malt containers just do not clean off very well can't I mean it's hard to get the uh, seal off so whatever it's good enough Probably got a little bit of malt on my hand there, so I'm just washing it off. It just gets annoying to have things be really sticky. I did clean my stove, so the fact the spoon's on there is not a big deal. But this is boiling, too, so we don't have to worry too much about sanitation at this point because the fact that it's boiling is going to take care of it. Now you can see that the malt is somewhat dark, and that's kind of normal looking for liquid malt extract just because it's so concentrated. Um... It'll lighten up a little bit. Actually, it may actually get darker while it boils because it's going to boil for an hour. But when we start adding up the top off water later in the fermenter, it'll probably lighten up a little bit. So it's nothing to worry about. And even, you know, and the color doesn't affect the f taste all that much. So it's not a big deal. Um, I like to fill up these containers of LME to try to get all the stuff out. I fill them, fill them up with water. Give it a really good shake. Now, you're really not supposed to aerate your wort during the boil process, but I really haven't had any issues, so I don't worry too much about it. It's 
supposedly you can get some off flavors by doing that but I'm not really too concerned with that and it's just a small amount of the wort that's actually been aerated so you can see I, I filled it I almost filled it up a little bit there I'm not gonna worry too much about stirring it just trying to get all the extra you can see the containers pretty much clean at this point so we'll go back on the stove here and I'll have to readjust the camera again give it a nice good stir make sure all the LME is off the bottom because I don't want it to burn that could give a bad flavor uh, nothing worse than burnt LME on the bottom of your kettle. Although I, don't, I haven't had that happen too much. There's always a certain amount of LME that sticks to the bottom I've found. Especially when you're on this uh, electric stove like I am. You can There's usually LME stuck right to the points in which the element is touching the bottom of the kettle. But I don't think it ever really burns too much. So it's alright. It's nothing to worry about. As long as you put in some good effort to clean the bottom of the kettle when you're stirring it up. So we're going to let it sit here and return back to a boil. All right, it's coming to a boil. Um, I'm going to have to deal with the hot break at this point. Um, hot break uh, tends to occur when you have a large amount of malt that you're trying to boil. Uh, the kettle will try to overflow. There's a lot of heat there. It'll bubble up. It's kind of like when you're making pasta, and if you have it too hot, it'll boil over. Or even jello, you know, anything like that. Well, the same thing happens when you're brewing beer, so we'll sit here and just watch it rise. And of course, I'm not really paying attention to but Oh, there I go. I found it. And you can try to stir it. Sometimes that helps, but as we can see here, it's not helping too much. I'm going to have to pull it off the, the burner. Maybe turn the burner down a little bit. Although it's funny. As soon as you pull it off that burner, it like immediately gets cool enough. And it just drops down. Which It's one of those things in home brewing you always have to be mindful of. So now that it's down, it's gone down a little bit. We'll put it back on the, the burner, try to get it back up temperature again, which it should be fairly close at this point. There we go. Now it looks like it's just going to boil. It's a good thing. I'm going to grab the first hop edition, which is the two ounces of Cascade hops. I believe these were 6.5% alpha acid. So nothing overly bitter, but it still makes for a decent bittering hop. All right, now I'm actually grabbing those hops. Uh, there's one bag. Oh, there goes one one ounce in. We'll grab the second ounce. I don't always stir. Sometimes I stir after I add hops. Sometimes I don't. Uh, it's kind of whatever I feel. I don't feel like there's too much of a difference. Uh, I'm going to start my timers here. I uh, remember with one minute left, I need to add the other ounce of Cascade. So I have a 59-minute counter. Uh, there's a 45 minute counter for me to add the wort chiller and whirl flock tablet at 15 minutes left and the 60 minute timer to say when I'm done with the whole uh, boil. As you see, look at all that nice green hoppy goodness floating at the top there. Alright, we're at the 15 minute left mark. So I, I don't think you need to watch the whole 45 minute boil. I'm going to add my wort chiller in here. 
I do recommend that you have another a pail or a bucket. Sometimes you can't get all the water out of the chiller. So if you have a bucket for it to drain into when it gets too hot or when it gets warm, it'll um, drain out into the bucket, not onto your floor. Uh, that little tablet I just added was the World Flock tablet. That'll help with clearing the beer. Now we're at the one minute left mark, and I'm adding the last hop addition. So that'll go for about a minute. I'm going to give this one a good stir. Just get everything nice and stirred up. With one minute left, you know, I want to make sure I get a good use out of those hops. So hopefully that helps or does something. Get a nice even distribution of the, that hop addition. And then I will uh, chill the word after this which I didn't get on camera. Um, pretty much I just took the chiller up to the sink and run cold water through it. Uh, I had some battery issues, so I missed the chilling process. So after it chills, I will be pouring it into my uh, fermenting bucket. Yep, we're, one, we're up. Time's up. Shutting the heat off. Um, grabbing the work chiller hoses and I'm carrying it over to the sink and this is where it's going to chill and I have my strainer in my fermenter there that will catch all the hops and some of the sludge from the boil you know the proteins and whatnot give that a good pour in there it'll also help air the strainer also helps aerate the wort which oxidation at this point is okay it's a good thing um, it helps the yeast ferment yeast like oxygen so you don't want to oxidize it too much in the boil or uh, after fermentation has started but before fermentation it's great now we'll add some top off water I'm gonna bring this batch up to five gallons which ended up bringing the OG a little lower the kit is made for five gallons. I'm not sure why I tend to get a lower OG than what they uh, say it should be. But either way. I'm grabbing my uh, stirring spoon. I like to use a plastic spoon on my plastic fermenters just so it doesn't scratch it up as much. With a metal spoon, you cause a lot of damage to your fermenter. And not really damage in the way that you think it's damaged, but a lot of scratches, which gives bacteria a place to hide. You don't want that in your fermenter. So I use a plastic stirring spoon. I think it's a really good thing to have. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a test with the refractometer. Um, at this point, I believe I had already taken one sample, and I'm going to end up adding another half gallon. Nope, I already had. So that was where I got 1035, and now I'm adding the yeast. This is just US05, a uh, safe ale. Pretty clean fermenting yeast. Works really well. I've never had an issue with it. Um, I just need to put my lid on, my sanitized lid and my airlock, and I'll be good to go. Cheers. The extra pale ale is in the fermenter. Um, 
The OG came around about 10.36, which is low. This beer is supposed to be 10.45, but I went for the full five gallons. I had done an OG check when it was about four and a half gallons. And I, I think I'm going to start learning that i got to do four and a half gallons. I want the full OG, but it was about 10.47, and while well, I overfilled a little bit, I hit. So half gallon is about enough to bring it down 10 points or so. So uh, that kind of sucks, but you know, it's not the first time I've done that, and I still had really good beer. This won't be as alcoholic. Um, so this is the only beer I have in fermentation right now. Um, all the beers have been bottled or kegged. So this will uh, replace the Snowden Pale Ale that's currently in my keg. Uh, it should be a pretty good beer. I hope it is. I've never done this before, or this one, this beer before. So it's one of Northern Brewers' best I hear. So it'll be it'll be good to see how that actually is. I do have a couple of other beers on their way. Uh, well, beer recipes, I should say. That's all I got for you this week, folks. Have a happy Homebrew Wednesday. Cheers, seventeen.